I was watching a Voltar stream the other day and he was working on an NES RGB mod and that got me thinking about the problems I was having with my NES RGB install. I thought I had a problem when I did my NES RGB install. I got some weird black and white video in one of the games I was playing. I thought it might have been because I wasn't using that additional voltage regulator that comes with the NES RGB. When I test these systems, I don't always put the screws back in the system. So I think what happens is because the cartridge slot is not screwed down all the way, it might have a loose connection somewhere, which is causing probably that black and white problem that I had in my original video. Anyways, I got curious and I asked Voltar why he doesn't use the additional voltage regulator in his installs. Several years ago, I uh, did a pretty thorough analysis on the thermal dissipation and the power draw requirements of the NES RGB. Even stress tested to the point where we were coupling things such as power packs and Everdrives. What we found was that the current draw wasn't too incredibly extreme. And as far as the, th the power to heat dissipation of the stock 7805, uh, as far as that really goes from a performance standpoint, from a heat output perspective, really wasn't necessary to include that secondary 7805. As a matter of fact, we did find that we introduced uh, a significant amount of noise uh, in the video output, including increasing the noise floor of the audio. Um, of the audio um, levels of the NES. So basically, the power draw isn't so significant that you're putting so much more of a burden on the stock 7805 to where that you really need an external one. And the thermal dissipation from that added current draw isn't enough to overwhelm this heat sink. Even though it's quite small, it runs quite okay. And we have, I probably have 400 front loader NESs in the wild, I've never had a failed heat sink, or I've never had a failed 7805, and I've never had uh, a 7805 reach a thermal shutdown because of this, period. I wanted to try to figure out some tests that I could do to kind of prove that the stock voltage regulator was enough. What I really wanted to do was test the amp draw of both a stock NES and the NES RGB and kind of see if the stock voltage regulator on the NES could handle it all that load. Unfortunately, it's not easy to measure the amp draw unless you can somehow isolate both the NES or the NES RGB by themselves and kind of compare it that way. But I figured I would do a little bit of Google searching to see if there was some data out there. I ended up finding a post on Schmup's forum by Tim Worthington, the creator of the NES RGB. In Tim's post, he talks about how the NES that he used to develop the NES RGB used a, an Australian AC adapter, which is 12 volts. The North American AC adapter is only nine volts. Because of the higher input voltage from the Australian AC adapter, the voltage regulator has a higher power dissipation. He said with this prototype, the voltage regulator heatsink got so hot that it almost burned his fingers. He goes on to offer three solutions to this problem. The first one is to reduce the input voltage. And for us, I think that's already accomplished because we have that nine volt AC adapter. The second one would be to increase the size of the heatsink. And the third one would be to use that external voltage regulator. He says using that external voltage regulator is the cheapest and most universal solution across any of the NES types. So I wanted to do a little testing on my own. I took out that additional voltage regulator and I set up a test where I put a temperature sensor on that little tiny heat sink to see how hot that thing really got during play. I went on to do this testing for several hours and I noticed that it only got to about 55 C or so. The recommended maximum temperature on a 7805 is like 125 C, which is double or triple what my temperature sensor was reading. Even if this test is a little bit flawed, like the temperature sensor isn't on there right, or maybe that's not even a great way to measure the heat, I really don't think we're getting hot enough to go anywhere near the danger zone of that 7805. If you are that concerned about the temperature overheating your NES, you can always swap out the 7805 with the 78S05, which actually has a higher recommended temperature. So that's something that you should do if you are worried about this issue. Leave a like on this video and leave a comment with some suggestions for tests that we could do to further test this issue. I'll see you in the next video.